And this is a question actually from a, uh, a follower of the show. He said, Joel Jamal, can you please ask Ricardo Bosi about this flag? It's supposed to be the Australian national flag. The uh, blue flag is the apparent government flag. What, what is this flag? We see it flown all the time at rallies, this red flag. Yeah, the flag has a... Um the, the the development of the flag, and you notice the actual stars even are slightly different. Mm. Uh, the development flag over the first, I think, 10, 20 years of the Australian Federation, it changed for a number of reasons. There are some that claim that this is the only lawful Australian flag, uh, that the blue ensign is actually under maritime law. There's a whole history there, and a lot of people get wrapped around the axles about it. Uh, and it's, it's worth pursuing in detail at some other point. Mm. The, but the point is this. People say to me, you should run the red flag because that's the legitimate flag. And I politely say, look, even if it is a legitimate flag, yeah. there are 25 million Australians that don't recognise it as a legitimate flag. Mm. They recognise the blue one. So you're dealing with reality and perception. And you've got to understand that you've got to drag people with you. Look, in, in the future, I dare say we're going to have a different flag altogether because, and this speaks to, and I've, and I've, I've, been, I've spoken on behalf of the Australians for constitutional monarchy because mm. that stability is important. We've spoken about that before. But it's going to be abundantly clear that this constitutional convention that we require, mm. because people are now learning that our constitution protects virtually nobody, yep. and that much of what the state premiers are doing is not unlawful, mm. and that's just terrifying. And the Australian people will decide, we need a constitutional convention, we may even become a republic, mm. maybe, but we've got to do it intelligently. As I've said before, we don't lose the history of our jurisprudence for one thing. It goes all the way back to Magna Carta. It really does, and, and, and we draw on this. So if we just cut off the constitutional monarchy and change the flag and put up a republic, we've got to be very careful about how we do this. That's why I said, once again, Professor David Flint, Emeritus Professor of Laws, any man in the country with the, not just the technical skills, but the character to actually lead a constitutional convention. The man is, the man is, is, is straight as an arrow. Oh, yeah. So, so the flag, is that the real flag or the wrong flag? It doesn't matter. Right now, people recognise the blue flag, but there's a bigger game at stake. It's what it represents and what it represents is the will of the people, and we need a constitutional convention mm. to determine how we wish to be governed. Mm. And then a part of that may include a revision of the Australian flag. Mm. And again, I have an opinion on what the flag should and shouldn't be, but it doesn't matter what my opinion is. What matters is what the people believe. Yeah. See, unlike, unlike you know, Slomo, who changed the words to the Constitution, well, thanks, Slomo. And whether you're legally entitled to do so is not the point. You're an imbecile. You're a fool. Put it to the people. Let the people decide. Same with the flag. Let the people decide. If they want a red one, have a red one. Mm. They want a blue one, have a blue one. They want a completely new one, that's fine too. But let's have a legitimate discussion on what it represents. The flag itself is interesting, but what it represents is far more important. And this constitutional convention, this new constitution for Australia, mm. which is foundational, it is more important than just about every other, as any other issue we must deal with. Yeah. And there are some bloody important ones. Yeah. But unless we get this right, we nail down that the people are sovereign, Mm. And all sovereignty is derived from every Australian citizen. Yeah. That's the point that must be made. And once again, it doesn't matter if you're a Prime Minister from Point Piper or a prostitute from Emerald, you are equal. Yeah. And equal sovereignty derives from both of you. Yeah. And that's what we've got to nail down. Once we get that foundational document down, everything else is achievable. If we don't do that, the rest is just sugarcoating mm. mud. Mm. Last question. Um, so you mentioned... No candidates for WA. No, nope, uh, no candidates for WA. And, and you've detailed the reasons. So what, what's happening with the national tour then? Are we going to Okay, so what happened was we were, going to, we were looking at candidates for WA state election coming up in March, and that would have knocked March out of the way, February and March, because we would have had to get into WA to do some heavy-duty campaigning. Unfortunately, the candidates fell through. As I said, some good ones, some not-so-good ones, doesn't matter. Uh, we're now not contesting the uh, WA state election simply because the people didn't want to. It's, mm. a, it's, it's as simple as that. Yeah. So that's now freed up the month of March for us. Uh, we've had some realigning to do on the Eastern Seaboard. The Victorian tour now will be in March, which is great. So we're using the rest of February to prepare for that. And so we'll do the Vic tour in March. We'll have all the tours done uh, by about May. And then uh, we launch um, very enthusiastically for the election coming in October, November. So that's the outline plan for the next 12 months. So... March, Victoria, mm. then we're going to do um, WA, NT, SA and TAS, mm. knock it all over by about May, and then we're still, we're still doing the, the foundational work for the election. We're working very hard on that right now. Yeah. A lot of work being done behind the scenes. 
And then, but we started getting a bit public from about June onwards, I say. Uh, but understand this, and there's a lot of frustration out there with the A1 people because they want to see results. Now, folks, you've got to understand this. And Joel, as a, as a builder, will know this. The deeper the foundation, the taller the building you can put into that hole. Mm. And if the, if the foundation is shallow, you are literally limited to the height that the building can be, mm. unless you start throwing buttresses up and you know, that's expensive. Uh, if you dig a deep, deep, deep foundation, in fact, a good architect can look at the depth of, depth of foundation and tell you exactly how many stories you can put on that foundation. So a lot of the work we're doing is that subterranean work. There's a lot of hard work going down on the bottom level. There is still work for A1 members to do, not members, supporters, because we have no members yet because the party's not formally up. So everyone's just a supporter. But there's still plenty of work to do. Yeah, And I've said it 100,000 times and I'll say it again. Let a box drop. Raise awareness. Step one. They know, like, trust, mm. but know first. So it's just print out some docs, run it past your state coordinator and make sure it's okay. It's consistent with our branding, the right colours, the right font, the right message. Print it out on your home printer and start letterboxing your electorate. Yeah, Raise awareness first. People want to protest. People want to do this. People want... Great. It means nothing. Once again, for the last time, if we have a protest and a hundred, a thousand people turn up, we have a problem. Mm. If ten thousand turn up, the police have a problem. If a hundred thousand people turn up, the polis have got a problem. If a million turn up, we win, mm. and we need to get to that million. It means so. Even the corrupted media can't lie. Yeah. So that's it, guys. This actually concludes the first half of the show. Um, because there's, as I said at the start of the show, there's four topics we can't we can't cover. That's the January sixth storming of the Capitol. That's election fraud. That's the Q conspiracy theories, and it's also who won the U.S. election. We can't discuss those things. So a lot of those things we're going to talk about. And so one of the ones was we can't talk about vaccines and all that. We can't talk about that stuff. So we're going to have to take it to subscribe stuff. So click the link in the bio if you're on YouTube. If you're on Facebook, go to YouTube and then click the link in the bio for subscribe stuff. Um, and, the, and the whole show will be there. I've reduced the rate to allow you guys to watch it for just a cup of coffee a month, um, which is nothing because there'll be an hour every week of a Additional content you won't see anywhere else um, but we'll be continuing this conversation over, over there for another hour next week we will be doing uh, questions for you guys to uh, allow you guys to get a bit of access I know a lot of people are very frustrated they can't get to Ricardo well that'll be your chance so uh, make sure you're, you're ready for that That it'll probably be Thursday <laughs> next week and uh, who knows maybe we'll have a special guest we'll oh look don't, don't complain because my kids say dad can we have a Politics free day, please. So you're not the only ones fighting for my attention. I'll tell you what the kids are they're missing out too. So yeah. we're doing our best. What do you say to the kids? No. It's, it's like oh no, I just drop the pen and do whatever I've got to do. Yeah. We found a um we found a caterpillar on the kitchen floor because we yeah. grow tomatoes in the back garden and this this is a tomato caterpillar. Yeah. And so we, we did it because we homeschool, we stopped everything and this be- became an opportunity for us to examine the life cycle of the caterpillar yeah. to the pupa to the moth and all that sort of stuff. So we, we take the opportunities as we can take them. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. All right. Well, guys, uh, homeschooling might be the way to go. I mean, Ricardo was telling me a story about um, one time he, he you were teaching the girls about uh, the chemical, uh, what was it, the, the periodic table and the different elements on it. Um, maybe it might be something you have to investigate if you have kids. But, yep. um, but Rick, we'll, we'll be back for a second hour. For those of you, go to Subscribestar and we'll go from there.